If I beat a nigga ass, am I wrong? If I beat a nigga ass, these rap niggas be talking so crazy. Like I won't beat a nigga ass. My daddy told me take him back to the 80s and just beat a nigga ass. Am I wrong? If I call Cookie G for a wax blunt, it's already three in rotation. You just passed one. Drink control straight, I'm only chasing where that bag going. She don't need no extra motivation when that ass going. Hey, pop a bottle and get out the club. Fuck around and catch a hollow, trying to mug. Hey, hey, not with the drama, I just want the plugs. I ain't with the drama. Hey, am I wrong? If I beat a nigga ass. Am I wrong? If I beat a nigga ass, these rap niggas be talking. Welcome back to the final installment of Battle Raps 2019 Year in Review. I appreciate you rocking with me. Look, I know yesterday got a little crazy with the uploads, but y'all hung in there, y'all stuck with me, and I thank you for that. So let's move right along. These last three to four months of the year have really been centered around three different events. And we're going to get to all three of them, the significance behind them, and the little in-between shit along the way. At the end of the last video, we addressed the whole brawl and the fallout of what happened as Summer Impact Reloaded. So let's get to this. Right after that, we talked about Briz going on a little hiatus. But that's not all the way true. Briz popped up and did a little interview with somebody who does blogs outside of Battle Rap Media. So I don't really feel it important to look his name up again or make sure to include him in this video. And Briz had a few things to say. Now, I'm not going to repeat them word for word, obviously, because I don't remember them. And Briz has said this several times in several different places. So I'm going to reiterate a little bit of it. And I'm going to give my opinion on it. Basically is this. After this whole melee. This brawl for it all. Briz feels like the fans turned on him. He really did. He felt like the fans was clowning him. They didn't respect him no more. They was joking him. You know, all that good shit. And he really just was upset at how they portrayed this fight to be. Now, I'm going to keep it a thou wow. Because that's the only way I know how to do it, bro. Briz can say whatever he wants. It just appears from the only angles that we get. Which is funny because it's a thousand motherfuckers in this crowd with phones out. And we keep seeing the same angles resurface over and over and over again. And it should be more views than this. It looks like Briz is getting beat up and chased all over the place. Now, maybe that's the only clips that people are releasing, but we're not seeing a whole lot of everybody else fighting this shit. And it just looks bad for Briz. And he has to understand that from a fan's perspective of what we see, it's cool to take Briz's word for it. That's one thing. But it's another thing to have the visual proof in front of us of what we can see and trust what we can see. As opposed to what he can say. Now, I think Briz is overlooking one major factor here. And that's that the jokes and all that shit just going to come with it, bro. This is just battle rap culture. Everybody's going to get joked. Everybody's going to have a turn to sit there and get roasted for one reason or another. Whether it be Geechee Gotti with the tree shit. Or photos of Rex and Mook popping out with smoking feet. And doing doggy ears or dog filters and shit. Just... It's your turn, yo. And this it's a brawl. It's a fight. Real niggas been in fights time and time and time again. Been around fights time and time again. Niggas gonna talk. Niggas gonna get their jokes off and shit. And then that's gonna be the end of it, yo. At the end of the day, Briz, you are completely respected in the battle rap culture, bro. Nobody is looking at you differently. At least not to my understanding. Nobody's looking at you different, bro, and judging you for this situation. Now, what I will say is this. Was you being extra? Yes. Did you go a little too far with the antics and, sh and shit? Yes. Did Mook have to swing? No. But was he within his rights? Yeah, I think he was within the rights of feeling like this nigga doing too much about the pop. So, it is what it is. It just comes with the shit. 
I think going forward, the obvious lesson learned is, yo, just let niggas rap, let them do their shit, and if I want to be extra when I'm rapping, I'll be extra when I'm rapping. It's just common courtesy, yo. Battle Rap had a, a big night, man. A very big night. URL, the world's biggest platform for MC battling, is coming to the 2019 BET Hip Hop Awards. Along with Smack for an exciting four-man elimination battle with $25,000 on the line. See what happens when T-Top, Shotgun Shug, DNA, and Geechee Gotti put on for the culture at Hip Hop's biggest award show. Make sure you tune in to the 2019 BET Hip Hop Awards. Tuesday, October the 8th, only on BET. Now, spoiler alert for anybody who been on the fucking rock, but DNA was the victor in this. Now, as great as a night as it was for Battle Rap, and as good as that turned out for DNA, man, did it fuck with Lockdown, which was the battle rap event that took place the night after. Highly anticipated card. Cassidy's second battle on URL. And this event, I'm going to just call it like it is, bro. This event was not good. Shotgun Shug had some stumbles and shit during his battle. Gichi Gotti seemed like his foot came off the gas a little bit in his second and third. DNA had a battle with Bill Collector that, eh, we've seen better DNAs, but he wasn't too bad. Overall, it just didn't pan out well to me. I felt like the event took a bit of a hit. The battles were not that great. The main event in itself, the anticipated matchup of Ars versus Cassidy, just did not live up to any thrill whatsoever. To be honest, I was more entertained with Cassidy versus Goods. Arsenal won this battle 3-0. It's not even close. I don't know what Cassidy is doing at this point in his career. We already getting rumblings in the background that Cassidy is coming back for 2020 for more battle rap activity. So we'll see what's to come from that. But there's one thing that did happen at this event that has to be addressed. We have to talk about the first round from Geechee Gotti against Tay Rock. There's a reason I didn't address it in the last video, and it's because I feel like it has to be talked about in this point of the videos right now. There is so much significance in that first round. Behind everything that had been going on. And might I say this first. Tay Rock has had a very crazy 2019. It's been uncomfortable for my bro. He done went through a lot of shit this year. A lot of trials and tribulations. And this was just no different. Leading up to this. Tay Rock's role in the summer impact. Uh, melee. Just. It just didn't look good. And a lot of people including myself. Had a lot of questions on how. Cave Gang was going to respond to this. The reason this is important is because as the leader of any group, gang, whatever the fuck you want to call yourself, you cannot have a moment of weakness. You cannot have a moment of lack of leadership. None of these things can show if you're going to lead niggas, period. It just can't happen. This fight breaks out. Tay Rock can be seen standing by a doorway. And there are no videos of Tay Rock really throwing any punches, slamming niggas, doing anything. Like, literally nothing. And there's a lot of criticism that comes behind that. Who better than a real Compton Crip while you got Cave Gang screaming out Cave Gang? The member of a real gang addressing Tay Rock. It was perfect. It, it couldn't have played out at a better time for this to happen. And Geechee 
much like a verb against Mook, took the opportunity to say all the things that the fans will want to hear somebody say to this person to address some of the things that they've done and their actions within the culture. It just was monumental and it was one of the better rounds, if not one of the top three rounds, first round, should I say, of the year. It was just incredible. It had everything you could ask for. He did not leave out anything. He even inc incorporated Tay Rock's seatbelt line, saying that, I guess that's why your seatbelt would work. You don't really ride with your niggas. Bruh. He started bombing on Tay Rock. Now, I will say this. I got Tay Rock running the battle. That's neither here nor there. I got Tay Rock winning the battle second and third. But it was a dope fucking battle, bruh. Salute to Tay Rock for being a good sport. And even though he brought this on himself, he stood in front of that shit like a fucking champ, yo. And dealt with the shit. He rebuttaled. He fought back. He didn't just let that round crumble him and get him out of pocket and have him acting all funny style. He just dealt with the shit, bro, and moved the fuck on. What did he say? He said he'll knock me out and suck my dick. It bothers me for you to say suck my dick. He's a, 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 a actor. He got away with it. But he ain't get away with it. What are we talking about? You're asking me for something that you gave me for holding down dot mode. Ain't nobody give you nothing, shorty. This is my trophy. That's what the fuck it is. You'll never ever get it back. You'll have to do oh something for my. it. But you taking something from a grown man, he ain't a man. You been on a decline. Damn. You lost the read. You lost Damn. the shine. Damn. Shine had to leave. Mook had to retire. I had to get cold for you to for you to perish. Battle Academy books. Tay Rock versus T Rex. Man, who would have thought this day was coming? Looking back over the years and everything that Rock did for Dot Mob and how important he was to waving that Dot Mob flag. It's no way we would have predicted years ago that this was in the making. It was down the line somewhere. And we would get to see these two stand in front of each other and battle. We all remember seeing Rock battling K-Shine and shit. And not long after becoming a member of Dot Mob and shit. It just is mind-boggling how these crews just fall out one after another. The members just fall out one after another another behind all this shit that goes on behind the scenes in battle rap. It's not so much the fact that the battle was actually happening. The reason Rock and Rex take center stage is because of all the interviews and the different clips and shit we got before we actually get to the fucking battle. A lot of us felt like there was no way that this battle was going to actually happen. Tay Rock kept button mashing the SMD. Rex was saying, I'm the big AI and we gonna fight if you pull that shit on stage. Yo, we gonna have to run the fade. That's the only way we can be on stage. I need Rex to see me outside. Rock is doing interviews on Champion, waving the dot mob chain, telling me you gonna have to do something crazy. He telling Rex he gonna have to do something crazy to get that chain back. Rex is doing interviews outside of a wedding with fucking sneakers on and a tuxedo and a hat, a dot mob hat. Doing <laughs> shit just crazy. Shit just crazy, bruh. It just was a lot of powerful video footage going around of these two saying the wildest shit leading up to this battle. We gonna leave it right there for a second and we definitely coming back to that. Now, I got to pay homage to somebody from the TRBRC. Now, I know some of y'all like the TRBRC. What the fuck is that? If you're not aware, okay, all of Cassidy's goonies and shit is outside running around calling themselves the real battle rap 
community. That's cool. We're going to let these niggas shine. But I had to include this nigga because it was a part of what happened in Battle Rap this year. It was a part of history. I know myself, the New Era family, different members of media was all paying attention, checking in on this brother. We had somebody named A Light and Illumination going for the world record. You don't understand this. I get real drastic, real fast. If you think it's fantastic, I got fanatics to say this is not your thing. Even if it falls, I'ma stop my thing. I don't even care. I'ma keep doing this. I'm aware. I'm prepared everywhere. This brother decided that he was gonna rap for the world record, which I believe was 25 or 26 hours of rapping non-stop. That is fucking crazy. Now, how many hours this brother actually rap? I think it was close to 30 or over 30, something to that effect. And I don't know if he was actually credited. It's to my understanding, <laughs> and I hate to laugh. I hate to laugh because it is a little funny though. It's to my understanding that the video got taken down or it was too long. So maybe the Guinness Book wasn't able to to verify the video or watch it or give him his credit for his attempt to break in that fucking record but at the end of the day I still wanted to give his brother a shout out and let it be known that yo you did your best it was a valiant effort and it's to be commended yo he did this shit for hip hop and we gotta salute that shit now as soon as we done talking about Rex and Rock and then we talk about Enlightened Illumination we right back to the respect the shooter card. Me and my brothers from New Era, we all, yeah, you know I me, mean? watched this event and was texting back and forth behind the scenes. That's what I gotta say, bro. The Rock and Rex battle did not live up to what many of us thought it was gonna be. Did they have a decent battle? It was a decent battle. Did it get crazy? No. But I think the highlight of this battle is clearly the ending of Rock's first. Now. Rex had some odd shit going on on stage. The nigga was dressed funny, shirt was all little. The nigga had his hands down in his drawers. He giving niggas fives. He doing all these wild ass movements and shit. Like Rex just looked out of pocket. But off that, off that. Tay Rock having this bar at the end of his round was just crazy. It was one of the doper moments in battle rap this year. And I really just fuck with it, just the way he delivered it, and the words specifically used against Rex was just incredible. Say the nigga that got your chain is dead. That is a lie. The nigga that got your chain is in front of you, and he is a lie. <laughs> Earlier in the night, though, we had Snake Eyes going up against Chef Trez. Now, the battle itself didn't hold a lot of weight. It's another version of Dot Mob vs. Cave Gang. A little rivalry that's obviously going on in 2019. The moment that changed this battle was when Snake Eyes started mentioning Briz. Briz, much like Sting in the WCW days and shit, just appeared from the rafters and shit. <laughs> Came out of nowhere. We hadn't seen Briz's face. We didn't know what Briz was doing. Rex was having stories about this nigga walking up with a hammer. All kinds of shit you heard about Briz. But Briz finally popped up. And I ain't gonna lie, bro. It felt like a wrestling moment. Briz came out of nowhere. He came down on stage while the nigga Snake Eyes was rapping. He stayed up there for uh, a pretty a pretty significant amount of time during the battle. But it was just good to see Briz back. It was a big moment that night. And I think all the fans who tuned in and saw that shit live really enjoyed that shit. 
on top of that 20. You do you. It's because of the promo part. You do you. I it's do me. It's because of the promo we part. We in it for two different purposes. Hey, you, well, you, you hit, listen. I'm in it for hip hop. I'm going to take that W. For hip hop? Yeah, nigga. <laughs> what the fuck is you talking about? What the fuck is you talking about, nigga? Hip hop. Yeah, yeah nigga. I'm here, I'm here for this. Breathe. I'm here for this bag. It's December now, and we coming to a close on the year. Not a lot has happened in December, but we still have had some things to talk about. There's a lot of speculation going around, a lot of things being talked about in the background and in the forefront. You got the rumblings of Chess and K-Shine potentially happening in 2020. You got Surf and Lux in a press conference. That battle scheduled to happen in 2020. We got the royalty card being discussed. A collaboration between URL and Queen of the Ring. It's good to hear Queen of the Ring coming back to the forefront of battle rap. We need the ladies out here. The headline to that card is 40 versus Miss Hustle. That should be a goodie. But there was some fallout here. There was a big blowout behind Surf scheduled to battle three dollars. Let's come out and say, not right now. Hmm. I'll take him later. Take him this time. Or something okay. Like that. Don't just don't talk all that shit to come out and take somebody that nobody wants to see you back. Hmm. Makes you look a certain way. Reed could do good and it could be beneficial for him, but it make you look a certain way. That's mm. what I'm saying. Listening to Surf explain it, it makes perfect sense. I know some niggas feel like he lying. I know some niggas feel like maybe that's not the case, but I tend to believe Surf. I think it makes perfect sense. So I'm going to explain it just a little bit before we move on to volume five. It's basically this. Surf is saying, look, dog. I know y'all want me to take the JCs, y'all want me to take the John Johns, the Cortezes of the world, and all these other niggas, but I didn't battle on Summer Impact like I was supposed to. In order to get my second half from that battle, I have to do a battle. Now, I'm sure he want that second half, so pick somebody to battle. Now, you got to realize that a second half is not going to be bigger than a whole bag for John John. A second half is not bigger than a whole bag for battling Cortez. So it don't make sense to take a, a name of that magnitude when you're only getting paid a second half worth of money to do a battle. I thought it made complete sense. So... Why not put Reed Dollars on my resume? Somebody who is trying to get his feet wet back in the game of battle rap. Who's not on his A game just yet. You know what I'm saying? And for Surf, it should be a layup. I'm going to walk in here. I'm going to be Sue Surf. I'm going to talk my shit. I'm going to try to dog walk this nigga real quick. Get a little light 30. And go about my business and get ready for whatever is ahead of me in 2020. So it made all the sense in the world, but the fallout, niggas was mad. The culture was upset. Surf is ducking. Surf is on some bullshit. Niggas was, niggas was pissed. The culture was so upset, and I'm just sitting back like, bro, just let this shit happen, fam. Just let it happen. It should be a good battle. And I was excited about the matchup just simply because, yeah, Surf was probably going 30, this nigga Reed. But at the end of the day, three dollars in a small room is a good look. It gave him an opportunity to not have to try to control the crowd, not have to be a performer, and just stand there and do what he's good at, which is just rap. Just rap, my nigga. You in a small room in the Valium series, it should work out great. And that leads us into the Volume 5 card. Man, was this card fucking incredible. Volume 5 today. Then, on Saturday, December the 14th, tune in with the rest of the world as URL presents Smack Volume 5. URL Smack Volume 5. Don't miss history. URL really did a great fucking job 
of putting this card together because I feel like I enjoyed every fucking battle from the first to the last. Now, one battle that should have happened on this card is move to the royalty card, which is Av versus Twerk. So yeah, the battle I cared about the most on the card did not happen. I'm looking forward to it. So we got to wait until January 11th to get that battle. Be sure to get your pay-per-views. Do not fucking slack on that one. But this volume five card, bro, it was it was just good, man. Chilla Jones versus Rum Nitty was a fucking classic. It was a movie. It was everything we anticipated it to be. It lived up to the hype. Geechee Gotti versus O Red was a fucking classic. It was a dog fight. These niggas really was bucking on each other. The shit got crazy. Every battle, just every fucking battle. I just wanted to make sure that I saluted the Valium 5 card. Um, DNA versus Averb was the headline to that card, obviously. There's a lot of controversy right now going on about who won that battle. So I'm going to just end this video by saying this. I feel like at the end of the day, DNA really battle wrapped Verb. And Verb out wrapped DNA. And I feel like you're not wrong whether you got DNA with it or you got Verb with it. Verb said a lot of real shit, a lot of shit that we can fuck with. And DNA got up there and did the battle rap version of what a battle rapper does. And I felt like performance-wise and what he brought to the table, the punchlines and all the shit that he brought, I felt like he I felt like he edged Verb in this battle. Was it drastically? Was it dramatically? No. But at the end of the day, I still credited the DNA. So I want to say this. Shout out to everybody who I mentioned in all the videos that I did recapping this 2019. If you didn't see the first half of the year, please go back, enjoy yourself, watch those first two videos I did recapping the first six months of the year. And take the time out if you haven't watched the previous video before this one. Go back, watch the last video along with this one and uh y'all be blessed man be careful heading into 2020 i think this is my last video for 2020 i might sneak something in there before the new year's drop i might it's your man fat boy though signing out for 2019 the same way i have all year long i respect the culture i advise you niggas to do the same hey yo posey for the last time in 2019 Take us home, low. Please don't unplug the game.